I'm Anna, and this is STEMWorks, the show where we explore careers in science, technology, engineering, and math, and see what makes them so much fun. We go inside businesses to see how professionals in the field do what they do. Today's show is all about mining, specifically mining in Nevada, and how mining companies come together as a big family under one umbrella that is the Nevada Mining Association. Let's get started. PBS Reno STEM Works is brought to you in part by the Desert Research Institute. We all love our phones, toys, and gadgets, but do you know what kinds of materials these are made of or where the raw materials come from? For example, the touchscreen on your phone is mostly silica, which is basically the same stuff as sand on a beach, although much more refined. The battery that powers your phone is made of mostly lithium. So where does lithium come from? By now, you probably have figured it out. Lithium comes from mining. So do things like plastics, ceramics, and metals like gold and silver. In Nevada, lithium is mostly mined from lithium-rich clay and briny groundwater deposits, where it can be pumped out and evaporated to extract the lithium mineral. So when it boils down to it, everything around you, from the phone in your hand to the couch that you're sitting on, comes from the ground underneath your feet. In order to get these materials out of the ground, mining companies must stay conscious of the environment. First, they have to get permission to mine, which only happens after they prove they will honor environmental impact regulations. When a mine closes, companies are responsible for returning the landscape to its original form. It's called reclamation. Of course, all these things don't just happen on their own, and there are professionals out there making sure that everything goes according to plan. From its first discovery to the actual mining, all the way to the closure and reclamation of a mine, Nevada Mining Association helps these groups find one another and achieve their mutual goals. With the help of the Nevada Mining Association, we're going to talk to three individuals from three different companies who are all involved in the mining industry at different stages in a mine's life. Ryan Revenel is a senior process engineer with Lithium Nevada. Ginger Papard is a senior environmental permitting consultant with SRK Consulting. And Lucia Patterson works with the Nevada Division of Minerals Abandoned Mines Land Program, where they use drones to find and secure old mine hazards. So come on, let's go find out what it takes for all these groups to work together to successfully mine and make the best batteries for our phones, while also keeping us in the earth happy and safe. All right, let's dig right in. What exactly is it that you do? The process engineering team is really tasked with taking the resource out of the ground and making a lithium final product at the most optimum way that we can do it. We really focus on the mining industry and supporting the client in the mining industry and so we offer a lot of specialized skills whether it's engineering design or conducting specialized like technical studies. We use drones for our abandoned mine lands program to inventory hazards so that we can see the photos and see whether we need to hike there or not to inventory and secure the hazard. Catching up with the team, talking with everybody, seeing where we are, what the current state of all the projects that we're working on, reviewing a lot of data that we generate here at the laboratory. We also collaborate with other outside agencies to bring data sources together to provide informational publications to the exploration community or even the public. Bringing together technical information, different scientific studies, things like hydrological models or geochemical models of the material that is going to be mined and look at the impacts of what a project is going to do. Just looking at experimental results, interpreting those results, and trying to use that information to design what we're going to do next here at the laboratory. What makes your job important? You've probably heard there's a lot of emphasis on electrification, specifically in the transportation sector. So lithium is used in the raw materials to make the batteries. And with the demand that we anticipate coming in the future, there's gonna to need to be more supply of lithium in order for us to meet some of these goals. But to permit a mining project, some of the studies that are required are things like your geology models, actually understanding what the resource is, hydrological models, so obviously a lot of mining you end up going into the ground and so you need to understand what that looks like underneath the ground and the impacts that might occur. We really serve as kind of a liaison in a lot of ways between the client and the regulatory agencies, but also help support, you know, really on the technical side of things. With the Division of Minerals, we have our Abandoned Mine Lands program. It's a public safety program where we inventory abandoned mine hazards such as deep shafts or adits, which you can walk into or inclines. Some of these can be thousands of feet deep. 
we have a base map which shows us where these things might be. And sometimes there's one X way, it's going to be a big hike if we can even get back out to it. So now we utilize the drones, fly them out there, they take a picture of the feature, we look at it and then we can assess whether we need to walk out there and inventory or secure or if it's a feature that doesn't present a public safety issue at all. We use chemicals in our process, we'll take the material that we collect out at site, We'll run it through different processes, different tests here, in order so that it can become a high quality, very pure product. There are several hazards associated with abandoned mine lands. There's deep falls, rotten timbers. People might see a ladder and attempt to climb down these ladders, and the ladder can be 100 years old or more, and the timber can be rotten so they can fall. There's deep pools of water where you can drown. There's dangerous animals that live in there. The mine can collapse on you or fall out from underneath of you. So making sure these things are safe and secure for the public is ultimately important. What do you love most about your job? What excites me most about this career, I think, is getting to look at the next rock. There's rocks all over this world. There's always another rock to study, and the learning process is constantly ongoing. And the technology, really, that's coming along, using computers to bring all these different data sets together, data sets on rocks, geochemistry. I get my hands on a lot of ore, a lot of uh, lithium containing clay and dirt. That stuff is cool to me, I'm an engineer. It's really exciting to see the entire process kind of be proven out and see that there's a path for us to make this chemical, which is gonna be very valuable for everybody in the world. I feel that we're actually making a difference, trying to help the world transition from fossil fuels into more green energy. That's really exciting for me. It's definitely a technical job, there's no doubt about it. But for me, that wasn't really what I ended up liking about it. Ultimately, it is a partnership between all these different groups and parties. And I really ended up liking that aspect of my career. One thing is my job is not boring. It's exciting. The tools we use are very cool. We have a lot of pumps. We have a lot of pieces of moving equipment. A lot of our analytical equipment is equipped with robotic auto samplers where we can queue up a whole line of samples and essentially walk away from the machine and come back and have all those samples processed. And it can tell us the lithium concentration in there. What are some of the most important skills when doing your job? Being able to put different software applications together to make different things work, like our field devices for collecting data, programming the drones to be able to send them out and fly to certain places that we want. Oftentimes I use different types of software, project tracking software, things like that. I pretty much run my entire job off of my laptop right now. It's my phone, it's my internet, and I do all of the word processing and any project management from that computer. So it gives you a lot more flexibility in how you do your job and also where you do your job. I would say that the most important skill that I have is relationship building because so much of what I do is dependent on client relationships as well as relationships with regulators or relationships with the people in my network. And those relationships have had a lot of value for me in my life. Just being able to, to talk with people is absolutely critical. At the end of the day, you have to be able to take that information and you have to communicate it to people. And you have to tell them why it's important. Do you have any other advice for us? Look for extracurricular clubs that are available at your school. There's robotics clubs, engineering clubs, things that you can get involved with to give you a little bit more exposure to those areas. Just try to explore the opportunities, even though you're young, like reach out to people, you know, adults that you know in that industry. I would be very open to a kid emailing me and wanting to ask questions and find out more. They could always call me. I would be more than willing to chat with them. Find a couple things that you like. And it doesn't necessarily have to be science, technology, engineering. It could be art or graphic design. You have your whole life as you get an adult to figure out where your career path is going to go. And your career path is probably going to change. There are so many different avenues out there that you can go into, the thing you're looking for might be hiding there in a STEM career. Wow, it was really amazing to get a sneak peek into the world of mining and how much collaboration goes on in the mining community. Thanks to Ryan, Ginger, and Lucia, we found out what it takes to locate, mine, and reclaim a mine site in order to make the longest lasting batteries for your toys and phones so you can keep playing your favorite games and watching your favorite PBS Reno programming. 
and thank you for joining us for another episode of PBS Reno STEM Works. You can get more information about Lithium Nevada, SRK Consulting, and the Nevada Division of Minerals on their website. For more information on these careers and others, visit pbsreno.org slash stemworks. And as always, don't forget to get out there and discover what it is that gets you going and on the right path to your STEM future. PBS Reno STEMWorks is brought to you in part by the Desert Research Institute.